Hi everyone, in this video I'll be demonstrating how to draw a shear force diagram. This is for engineering science entry and the syllabus specifies that we start from the left and then we move towards the right. So this video is for somebody that already knows how to calculate the reactions. So my left, re I start with this, uh, the value of the, I've already calculated the reactions. My left reaction is 94 newtons, is at point B, and my right reaction is 40 newtons, is at point E. So, also for engineering science entry, we the, the beam comes already labeled using uh, capital letters A, B, C, D, E. So, this labeling is called Bowman's notation, and the labeling is at position of point loads, positions of reactions, positions of a uh, start or end of a UTL and also the start and end of a beam. So when we do a shear force diagram, this labeling is important because at every label, the graph is going to change. So we are going to then use the labels in order to draw the diagram, the shear force diagram. So we begin then by drawing a horizontal line. This horizontal line is, co is called a, a baseline. It's the same size as the beam. And then you can also then use uh, 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 use the scale to draw it, maybe like four centimeter equals to four, 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 four meters. One centimeter, one meter. So now we start at point A. The question we ask is what is there at point A? So then the answer is at point A, there is a point load a point load causes a negative shear force. So we are going to go down and we go down by a vertical line at point A. So the magnitude of the point load is 30 newtons. So therefore we are going to go down by 30 units. So then I draw a vertical line from zero going down and then I'm going to label this corner negative 30. So the negative is optional but it's 30 newtons below the line. My next question then I ask is what is there between A and B? So I say between A and B there is a UTL. The scale of the UTL is 5 newtons for every meter and the length of distribution is 4 meters. So I'm going to subtract 5 newtons 4 times because it's 4 meters. So when I want to know my point at B, then I calculate I write the calculations, I say negative 30, 30, negative 30 is my intercept where I start. Then I subtract because uh, UTL also calls this negative shear force. Then scale, which is 5 newtons, multiplied by the length of distribution, which is 4 meters. And then I get an answer of negative 50. So therefore, when I subtract 4, 5, 4 times from negative 30, I end up at negative 50 okay so then and then i will draw this using a slope line so then i'll have a slope line or an inclined line to move me from negative 30 to negative 50 then i label that corner there negative 50 newtons now i'm at point b at point b i ask what is there the answer is at point b there is a reaction a reaction causes a positive shear force, so we go up, we go up by using a vertical line, then the magnitude of point B, the reaction is 94 newtons, so I am at minus 50, so I calculate, I say minus 50, and then I say plus because of positive shear force, then I end up with an answer of a positive 44. So therefore I'm going to draw a vertical line that will take me from negative 50 to negative uh, to positive 54 so from negative 50 ne positive 44 then the positive is optional uh, even if you just write 44 newtons it's okay the next question i ask is what is there between b and c and as you can see, between B and C, there is no UTL. When there is no UTL, it means that I do not go down. I remain there at 44 newtons. So therefore, I'm going to draw a horizontal line to take me from B to C. 
so I'm still at 44 and since I have a horizontal line there's no need to me for me to label 44 newtons at point C I ask what is that point C at point C there is no point load there is no reactions so therefore we are not going to have a vertical line going up or a vertical line going down because there is no uh, force applied at point C the next question we ask then is that what is there between C and D between C and D there is a UTL the scale is 4 newtons per meter the distribution is 4 meters we don't say 6 meters because 6 meters moves me from C to E I'm only looking for a distance distribution from C to D so therefore it's for 4 meters so I'm going to subtract 4 4 times when I calculate I say 44 which is uh, my intercept now minus 4 which is the scale multiplied by 4 which is the distribution so I say 44 minus 16 then I end up with 28 newtons so therefore I'm going to move from 40, uh, 44 and move to 28 at point D so using a slope line or an inclined line and I label that corner 28 newtons now I'm at point D I ask what is that point D at point D I have a point load point load causes a negative shear force so I'm going to go down with a vertical line and then the magnitude of the point load is 60 newtons so then when I calculate I say 28 minus 60 and then I end up below the line at negative 32 newtons so I'm going to draw then a vertical line that will take me from negative from positive 28 to negative 32 so then I label that corner negative 32 newtons okay I ask next what is there between D and E so then between D and E there is a UTL 4 newtons per meter the distribution is 4 to me is 4 2 meters so now I'm going to subtract 4 2 times when I calculate I say negative 32 then minus 4 which is the scale times 2 which is the length of distribution so and then I end up with negative 40 so therefore I'm going to move down with an inclined line from 32 I move to negative 40 oh, that's too much let's see so from negative 32 to negative 40 then I label that corner negative 40 newtons now I'm at point E I ask what is that point E the answer is that there is a reaction therefore reaction we go up with a vertical line by how much by 40 newtons which is the magnitude of the reaction so I'm at minus 40 then I add 40 I end up with 0 so then I draw a vertical line to take me from negative 40 at point E to 0 so then my shear force diagram ends at zero. So then this is therefore the complete shear force diagram. I started at zero and I ended up at zero. And then also I have an area above the line and an area below the line. So a shear force diagram is supposed to have an area above and an area below. So then the area below is this one and this one and then these areas are supposed to be equal so in other courses they will calculate the, the areas and check whether they are equal so for us our mark allocation is too small we don't calculate uh, the areas but we know that when we look at the diagram it must have an included area above and an included area below and these areas should look round about equal and then on a shear force diagram what do we mark we mark then the values at the principal points you must label values at principal points and then 
we also then mark the shape of the line so then this is a slope line indicating presence of the UDL between A and B horizontal line indicating no UDL between B and C etc so that is then what is marked on a shear force diagram try to draw it to be as neat as possible and then these calculations that I was writing here it was just for to assist you you do not have to show them on the diagram uh, they, they, they are not for mark purposes it's just for illustration so that is it I hope it helps and I hope now you understand how to draw a shear force diagram thank you